Do you need cash quick to buy a property or are you an investor and you don't want to liquidate all of your assets to purchase more real estate? Then you've got to check out this entire episode of Real Estate Talk. In this episode, I have the honor of interviewing Will Coleman, a hard money lender that is basically your business partner when buying investment properties. Hi everyone, if we haven't met yet, I'm Troy Sage, local realtor, and I am the host of Real Estate Talk. In this episode, we're gonna talk about all the steps in hard money lending and how the right hard money lender is actually a business partner to help you build wealth. Check it out. Let's uh, let's dive right into this, Will. Um, so you're a hard money lender, correct? Yes, sir. So for our audience, explain, you know, what is what is a hard money lender? What is the concept behind this? Yeah. So the hard money lending is, is it's basically an alternative to bank financing. So banks are great at what they do. They finance the majority of real estate in the in the country. Uh, but hard money is kind of for situations or deals that a bank might not be the best fit on. And the, the big difference is banks get their money from deposits. So they take consumers deposits and they lend those funds out because of that, they have to be very conservative and there's a lot of red tape because they can't lose people's deposits and uh, a hard money lender either uses their own capital or raises capital from investors and then lends, lends those funds to people who are buying real estate. So it allows the hard money lender to do unique deals close much faster. There's less red tape. And, and a lot of times it's a better fit for a borrower than, than going to a bank. So it's, it's just an alternative financing source for real estate. So in saying this, what, what would be a typical scenario? Um, you know, I'm, I'm guessing not a first time home buyer that needs down payment assistance. That's going to go low money down. What is a typical scenario when someone reaches out and says, "Will I want to buy X, Y, Z, um, you know, who, who would that caller be or who would that buyer be? Yeah. So it, it, it's usually someone who's buying an investment property. So hard money lending is not the best fit for someone who's wanting to buy a personal residence. It's usually it's someone who's buying a, a property they're going to purchase, renovate and sell or purchase, renovate and refinance into longer term debt in order to rent it out. Uh, in addition, hard money is usually very short term. Like, Fix and flip is the perfect example of someone who's going to buy, renovate it, and sell the property. Usually it takes three months to renovate, three months to sell. So uh, you can only need the capital for six months and then sell the property and make a profit. A another great example is the deal that I actually I did, which most people are probably familiar with the Burr method, uh, where uh, we, we bought a property, we renovated it. So we bought it with hard money. We renovated it and then we refinanced into uh, a longer term rental loan. And then we rented the property out and we've held it um, for seven or eight years now. So that, that's another good example where you're able to get a, a, a close faster, get a, a, a higher leverage loan to purchase it. And then knowing we're going to refinance out after we renovate it. So for an investor, it's uh, if they find a hot property that they have to have that they're going to flip or possibly rent out. It all, all depends on what their, their end game is. They can come to you and say, Hey, Will, I found this, this single family dwelling, or I found this fourplex, or I found whatever it is. I need to get this money. I need to buy this place right away. Then they can um, start the rehab process, get into it. And as they get close to their, their maturity date on their loan, they can refinance, pay you your money back and then, and have a different loan. That's exactly right. Yep. So that's going to be great for investors. So anyone listening or watching this on YouTube, this is not, this is not for first time home buyers, just to reiterate, this <laughs> is not for someone looking out to buy their primary resident. This has to be an investment. When an investor comes to you and says, I want to buy XYZ property, how do you evaluate the, uh, the borrower? And then I have a follow-up question to that. Okay. So the borrower, it, it's pretty simple. It's, um, experience, capital, and credit. So we, 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 I personally like to meet the person, uh, the borrower in person, uh, especially if it's a large deal. Like just the other day, we financed a $650,000 loan. 
And I, I'm, you know, I'm, we're raising all of our own capital. So I'm genuinely raising from people that I know. So if I'm going to lend out $650,000, I, I want to make sure that I know who we're lending the money to. So I, I personally just, I love to sit down with the borrower, have coffee with them, get to know them, get that kind of face-to-face gut feeling of, of who they are. That's very important to me. Um, but then in addition, what's, what's their experience, you know? So, uh, have they done real estate before? If they are new, which is fine. What is your experience? Were you engineer? Were you, are you just straight out of college? Are you, uh, you know, are, are you a realtor? Uh, there's a lot of types of experience that can be very applicable to renovating deals. Like if you've been in construction your whole life, or if you've worked for a builder, that's very helpful. If you, even if you've done zero deals, so just getting to know the person, getting a gut feel for who they are, and then understanding their experience is very important. We do like to get a credit check. I'm not super worried about their credit score. What I'm worried about is your history of payments. So if, if you've got low credit, but you have a, a 100% payment rate on your, your payments, I'm good with that. It, it kind of, to me, it shows you, you pay your debts, which is important to me as a lender. Um, and then lastly is uh, verifying your capital. So we do ask for verified liquidity and then understanding how much cash you have in the bank. And, you know, that's obviously important because if it's a $50,000 renovation budget and you have two grand in your bank, then it, it, it's not a wise decision for us to lend you the funds to purchase the property. So, um, yeah, experience, gut check, credit and liquidity. And that, that totally makes sense. So, I would imagine also if someone's new um, and they as they show you a game plan and it makes sense, right? With their with their liquidity, they say, "Hey, I've never done this before, but I've got X amount in the bank. I got fifty grand in the bank. I need to borrow X amount. This fifty is going to cover renovations, and I'm going to have a cushion there to make sure you're paid." That's probably super helpful as opposed to someone that says, "Hey, I've got ten grand in the bank, and I need to do twenty grand in renovations." So it's just it's common sense lending, right? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I, I, someone asked me the other day what they should do. Uh, like it's another lender. They were considering making a deal with somebody and I go, well, how much, how much liquidity do they have? And they go, well, we haven't verified that. And I go, well, that's a great first step. Cause if he's got a million dollars in his bank, it makes this uh, conversation very easy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, once you get past that, so say we have uh, you have a a client or a, a buyer, and they've shown you that they can qualify for your loan. Mm-hmm. How do you then evaluate the property to know what what is fair? I know in conventional lending they have an appraisal, and the the appraiser will dictate the value, so this way the buyer is not overpaying. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have the same kind of process? So as of right now, we don't we don't do appraisals. A lot of lenders just kind of point blank look at the appraisal. Um, You know, I I think the good ones obviously will do some form of their own uh, diligence, but a lot of them will just take the appraisal and use that as value. They'll take all the comps from the appraisal and use that as value. And they won't even look up their own comps or like look at their own deals. So um, appraisals can be useful, but I think you shouldn't use that as the only determiner of value. That's probably the best way to think about it. Yeah, it's it's one aspect in that purchasing process of, of the asset, whether you're an investor. Um, I have investors that they run independent appraisals on every property that they buy. And, and sometimes we have that same situation you're talking about where the appraisal came in at a very different number than what we see on a, on a buy and rehab or a fix and flip, um, whatever yeah. people want to call it today. Um, and we go, wow, this guy came in like extremely high. And we're like, there's, we're never going to see that kind of money. Or <laughs> most of the time they, they actually come in low, right? Because mm-hmm. they're not looking uh, 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 ahead at the market and what's actually going to be done. Plus the appraiser doesn't know um, what this buyer is actually going to do to the home. Are they going to put in a fiberglass tub surround? Or are they going to have some imported tile from Italy that they install uh, you know, in that bathroom and does the neighborhood actually support that? I wanted to ask you this. I know you've been extremely successful. Um, and I, your clients, uh, are very happy when they use your services. So do you want to share a success story or anything, um, <laughs> that comes to the, the top of your mind or it's up to you? You're, you're more than welcome to share that. Not it's a success story, but also kind of a, like st- a deal that went a little squirrely. So I think it's, it's uh, useful, which is 
um, it kind of what we talked about in determining value. We had a borrower of ours come to us and he was a realtor and uh, we knew him really well. He was a very close friend of Brandon's. Uh, I guess I won't disclose too much of the story, but uh, so we really liked the guy. We knew him, liked and trusted him. And uh, he had a deal that we underwrote and we kind of went to him and said, hey, our loan is in a good position. Like we'll do this loan, but we're worried you're not going to make a ton of money on this deal. Like we think your renovation budget is going to be a little higher than you think. We think it's going to sell for a little bit less than you think. So we're telling you now we'll do this deal, but we don't think you should probably do this deal. And uh, so, you know, he, he kind of told us like, Hey, I get it. I appreciate it. It's my first deal. I think it's a good one. I want to go for it. And we're like, okay. Uh, and then four or five, six months later, uh, the house wasn't selling. And he, so he did spend more than he thought the house wasn't selling. And um, then it got hit by a tornado. So oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> the house got hit by a tornado, not, not the, uh, not the bank account. Correct. Yeah. The So the house got hit by a tornado and this is wild. Um, it, it, it got hit by a tornado the day after his property insurance expired, literally like 24 hours after. Luckily that it was very minimal damage. It was like siding on one of the side of the house and then some of the roof and some gutters. So it was like, it was like 10 K worth of damage. It wasn't terrible. Um, but um, so that obviously now he's got to spend 10 grand more and his insurance is going to cover it. So it cut his margins even that much further. And um, the reason this is a success story is because, so we raise all our own capital. We don't have a lot of red tape. We, um, we can make all of our own decisions. So we, we don't, a lot of hard money lenders will get a line of credit from a bank. How's it going? And that, that line of credit, uh, the bank then can control what they do with those funds. So because we raise all our money from our investors, we're able to get creative and do what we need to do. So what we ended up doing is we lent him an additional uh, 10200 to pay for the repairs of the tornado damage. And so that it still cut his margins down, but he didn't have to come out of pocket to pay for those funds. So um, it was... It was it was not great for the borrower because I, I I think he I think he maybe he made like five ten grand on the deal which for six months worth of work is is not enough to do the deal in, in my opinion, um, but the success story is we were kind of able to guide him and say like here's our opinion of the deal and then he got in a bad situation we're like okay we can help you so it's 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 a success story in the fact that we really showed our value to, to him as a borrower, even though the deal didn't go quite as he expected. But um, it, uh, I, I think, you know, I think he came out of that really appreciating what we did. Yeah. It's a, it sounds a little bit more personal service, less red tape. And even if a disaster does strike um, <laughs> you guys are, it's, it's so humanized where we don't have that when we're using on a traditional um situation. What advice would you give to someone that has invested for a while and has never used hard money? What advice would you give them on the advantages of using hard money uh, compared to paying cash or using a, our traditional lending? I guess I would just say it's like, it, it's another tool in your tool belt if you need it. If you don't need it, if you've got enough cash, great. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, that that's I'm pumped for here for me. I'm pumped that you have the ability to do that. Um, but hard money can be a tool in your tool belt. If you do need it, for example, like let's say you have 500 grand in cash, you find two or three deals. Now you've put 420 grand into those deals. And then, and then a phenomenal deal hits your desk and you're like, I don't have any more cash. What do I do? This is a great deal. There's no way I can pass this up. That's that's an, an, an example where someone who uses usually owns uses cash, it's worth having built that relationship with the hard money lender already, so that if you need to close in seven days, you're, you have the ability to do that. So, I completely get that hard money is expensive. It is, and uh, I always say if you can find cheaper money, go with it. Like don't don't use us unless it's worth it for you. 
but it's just another tool in your tool belt that can be helpful in the event you find a great deal and don't have the cash. So that's, that's what I would say. I don't know if that's advice, but it's kind of a sales pitch. <laughs> but, um, no, it, it totally makes sense because it keeps the investor uh, liquid, mm -hmm. right? They, yeah. they could be in the middle of a deal. As long as the margins are there, it's, every, it's a win-win for everyone. If, if an yeah. investor has $500,000 and they find a deal over here for $250,000 and they hard money it and there's the margins are there, it makes sense. Um, so I, I think hard money is a great thing. It's That comes back down to your initial gut check and meeting with people to say, what's your end game? What is your goal? Right. Not just on that one property, but on, you know, a five year game plan or a 10 year game plan. For sure. What advice would you give for borrowers uh, considering hard money loan? And what are the misconceptions about this type of financing that, that you'd like to address? This is probably the advice that a lot of hard money lenders will give, which is just kind of have your ducks in a row. Um, you know, lenders in general will probably say this, like, uh, don't just send a, me a purchase price that's a, or a, a purchase address and say, hey, here's the deal. Can you do it? You know, like I, I get that a lot, actually. <laughs> to send me a property address and say, hey, I've got under contract for 200000 Can you Can you do this? So I would say have your ducks in a row, like have a, your, your renovation budget, pictures of the property, comps. Like if you can call me and say, hey, I've got this deal, talk through it. And then send me a full email. It doesn't have to be a lot. Like that is one of the big, great things about working with hard money lenders is it should be very smooth and easy. But if you can just do a little bit of upfront work and give me purchase and sale agreement, pictures of the property, comps, renovation budget, uh, and kind of the story of your of the deal, that would uh, it makes a huge difference. When I visualize this, I see a hard money lender as being part of the team. So you're going to have the investor, you're going to have the subject property, you're going to have the um, the hard money lender. Um, hopefully, they're going to have a realtor that helps them find the property. And then, of course, you have all the other uh, pieces of the pie, the title company, et cetera, et cetera. But in my opinion, having a good hard money lender, as, as you said, as part of your tools in your tool pouch, you can come across deals and really make, a, make good money if you're passionate about real estate in buying and flipping properties using a hard money lender. You're part of the team is how I, is how I really see it. I would definitely agree. And, and, and a good example of that is a, a, a borrower of ours is looking at a deal and I went and walked it with him. I walked the deal with him and he just told me, he's like, Hey, I've already got, like, I, I may try and wholesale this deal. I already have a construction lender that I'm looking at with it as well. Um, and if, if those don't work out, we'll go with you. So like, I'm perfectly aware that he's got, he's, we're kind of his number three option, but, um, we're part of the team and we're here if you need us. You know, that's, I think that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. I, I think a lot of, especially new investors that have never invested or maybe flipped one property, the misconception that I'm getting from um, new investors is I would never use hard money. I'm going to use all my own cash. And uh, that goes back to what we talked about. They're not as liquid then because real estate is cyclical and you might have a bunch of deals at one point and then it kind of dries up. And so you invest all your cash into one property, you're no longer liquid and then boom, another deal comes up and you miss out on it. Yep. So I like the idea of having a hard money lender as part of the tools of building my empire, as opposed to using all my cash all the time. What is a misconception that you're aware of uh, in regards to hard money loans like that you might hear from people? What's a big misconception? <laughs> well, it may not actually be a misconception. There's probably some truth routed in it, which is that like hard money lenders are greedy people just trying to fee you to death. Uh, and that like most stereotypes, there is probably a lot of truth in that. There are probably a, a lot of hard money lenders that are, are basically predatory and they'll have really high interest. They'll let they'll loan you more than they should. And then you get to closing and there's like four or five different fees that you didn't even know were happening. There was like, you know, there's an admin fee, an underwriting fee, a legal fee, a doc fee, uh, you know, closing fee. And, and uh, it, that, that is, that's probably happening. So that conception is, may not be misguided. Um, but there, there are, there are most, most hard money lenders are usually people that have been very successful in real estate and just want to make a good return on their capital. And they can be an invaluable resource 
to the borrower. And yes, the capital is expensive, but our, our goal is we want you to make money. We don't want to try and suck the margin out of the deal for you. Some lenders probably do that. And uh, that's why we, we may have a bad rep, but a good hard money lender is should be a, a resource. And, and the more our borrowers win, the more we win. And that's that's kind of the way we like to look at it. I like it. And I, I agree with you. And I, I think it's in every single part of the real estate industry, right? Yeah. There's conventional lenders. When I say conventional, I mean, your, your typical Fannie Freddie back lenders. They're not looking out for the client's best interest. They're just going, here's a loan, go buy the house. Good luck. And mm -hmm. the same thing happens with realtors. The same thing happens with uh, inspectors. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions in the other aspects of real estate. I like what, what you said. And uh, uh, I like your vision that you're a partner in a way. Um, yeah. If I was looking at a property today in your area and said, I want to buy this property, I would, um, I would invite you to say, well, let me take a look at this on paper. And if I need to, let me come to the property with you. Let me really look at this because we, we want to make sure that you're lined up for success in the future, which is way more important than, as you just said, some letters will say, yeah, dude, we'll, we'll give you the money for this. And in fact, <laughs> here's $500,000 on a $200,000 flip. And then they're yeah. just looking at their bottom line. If any of you are watching this on YouTube, uh, check in the description below. Uh, you'll have direct contact to Will if you have any questions on hard money lending. If you want to borrow some money, I know he's got the money, so he'd be happy <laughs> to be your business partner and help you uh, build your success. Will, thanks for uh, being on our show, and uh, we look forward to talking with you soon. Yeah, thank you, Troy. It was fun.